Ah! I made so many stupid mistakes when I started my own accounting firm back in 1996. And the other day, Martin Bissett caught up with me and interviewed me and asked me about the big mistakes I made when I started in practice. But also, I shared my thoughts on where I see the future of the accounting profession going. Come and join me on this video to find out some of the mistakes that accountants are making and also some of the big opportunities for accountants in the future. Hi everyone, I'd like to welcome you to the very latest in the series of the USP Expert Interviews. For many of you who have been following this series, you'll know that there have been uh, very well-known names that we've uh, been speaking to, the likes of Ron Baker and Paul Dunn and Steve Pike. And uh, what I want to do now is to move this on to a, the, the next level. And I've uh, had the, the, the privilege and pleasure of talking today with ABN's Mark Wickersham. Now, Mark, for, for me, uh, as somebody who observes the profession, is one of the great emerging gurus uh, that we have in the profession now. Somebody who has helped a huge number of firms develop their infrastructure and been able to really support them in a number of ways to grow their practice. Um, sometimes um, astronomically so, certainly some of the firms that I've worked with over the years have uh, ascribed a tremendous amount of their success down to Mark, the AVN, and the systems and processes that they provide their members with. So I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to speak with Mark today and to give uh, a platform to uh, someone who I think we'll be hearing a, an awful lot more from um, in the coming years. So Mark, thank you very much for taking your time to, to be with us today. You're welcome. And I'm flattered that you've called me one of the emerging gurus. <laughs> That's, that, that's how I see it. That is Thank how you. I see it. And, you know, that, that's the, the voices that I hear and the, and the, uh, the, P, the voices that I hear people subscribing uh, to. Yours is, is right up there at the top, so that's, that's, that's an honest opinion there. Thank you. What I'd like to do is to get an idea of how you've arrived here, because obviously AVN is closely associated with Steve Pipe and, and, and his... Uh, uh, his personality and that's changed now. So I'd like you to, to tell me how you grew from from qualifying as a chartered accountant to uh, having your your own practice through to being what is now uh, probably what one of the most foremost advisors for uh, accounting firms in the UK. Yeah, okay, sure, yeah. Uh, I, I entered the accounting profession way back now, back in uh, 1988, qualified as a chartered accountant three years later and always wanted to set up, be my own, have my own, in charge of my own destiny and, and become a partner. And in 1996, set up my own accounting firm from scratch, working from a room in my house. Uh, that soon became an office and then another office, and that grew very rapidly. In fact, uh, in the first two and a bit years, grew to 200 clients, a couple of hundred thousand pounds of fees, um, grew very fast. Um, but also, I made a, an incredible number of mistakes in those early years, and despite the, the very rapid growth of my accounting firm, I wasn't making any money, uh, and something needs to change. And it was 1990, uh, 1998 when I first met uh, Steve Pipe, and uh, became one of his first, one of the first accountants to, to become mem an AVN member. And so I've known Steve since 1998. Uh, he completely changed the way I thought about running a county practice. And I uh, put in place a number of things that he talked about, so much so that uh, a year later he asked me to be a guest speaker at one of his masterclasses. Uh, that went down. The feedback was uh, overwhelming at the time. And Steve asked me to do the next one and the next one. And I've done every masterclass ever since. Uh, Steve and I got together then and started working together uh, since 2000. So I've been working with accountants now for over uh, uh, over 13 years. And I, I sold the accounting firm. One of the things I learned from Steve is the importance of systems. I systemized it, and built it up to a stage where uh, the, the client manager could do a buy, management buyout and, and bought my practice. That was in 2006. And since then, I've spent all my time uh, helping accountants, which is something that... Uh, I, I'm passionate about helping accountants. It's something I've obviously I come from a background of being an accountant, uh, made some mistakes in the early years, uh, learned from those mistakes, changed my practice, 
and I get a huge amount of satisfaction teaching other accountants how to do the same sort of things I did. Uh, and I'm very, very fortunate, very lucky to have worked with uh, myself over a thousand accountants now since two th since the year two thousand, and uh, many, many uh, success stories of firms doing some incredible things. Mm, and there's a point that I'd really like to, to investigate further because using generic stereotypes, uh, the accounting profession is, is pigeonholed of being quite conservative and what you've done is you've built up a practice, systemized it, sold it and then gone to help other firms. What was it that gave you the confidence to do that when so many peers and, and professional colleagues struggle with the very basics of growing their firm in the first place? Uh, that's in interesting, uh, and uh, I think the the, the reasons there's, there's a number of reasons. For, for me, the thing that back in 1998 that that uh, that really grabbed my attention was when Steve Pipe introduced me to Michael Gerber and the E Myth, and uh, and we sat down and watched a video, and that completely changed the way I thought about how you run a business, and. Uh, it was interesting. We had Paul. You mentioned uh, we had Paul Dunn uh, as a as a conference speaker a few years back, and it was my my job to interview him and ask him questions uh, while he was on the stage. And uh, and a lot of my questions were similar to what you just asked. And and Paul's response was for, for pretty much every single question was uh, stop doing it, get somebody else to do it. And I think the big problem is with us as accountants is we 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 want to be in control. We do everything ourselves. Uh, and if we're doing everything ourselves, then we can't possibly let go and, and start doing other things. We can't build a successful business if we're spending all of our time working with our clients. Uh, and I guess that's the kind of, the, uh, in a nutshell, the key message from Michael Gerber. And it's the thing that's always been at the forefront of my mind. It's about how can we build a business, how can we build an accountancy practice that's successful, built around systems that works even if we're not there. Mm -hmm. It's a very sound commercial strategy. Uh, and certainly the, that, that rolls very nicely into the next question I was going to ask because you mentioned that you've made many mistakes along the way and you mentioned there that Paul's advice was to get someone else to do it. But beyond those two, looking back on your career experiences to date, if there was one thing that you could change about the accounting profession overnight, what would it be? That's a great question. Uh, I, I think it's uh, one of the things that, that I firmly believe is that, that, uh, that uh, and certainly is at the heart of AVN, is that the, the accounting profession is a great profession. It's a profession where we have, we have the power to change people's lives uh, uh, because we can, we, we can completely transform their financial situation, whether it's through tax savings, whether it's helping to grow their business, which can, or helping to sell the business, and, and so we have this ability to change lives. Uh, and I believe that as accountants, we we deserve to be richly rewarded as a result of that. However, unfortunately, the harsh reality is, is most accountants simply aren't earning enough money, uh, particularly when you consider the, the years of experience, the professional exams we've gone through. And I think the big problem is, and the one thing, if I, if, if, we, if I could change something in the profession, is I think that professional exams, the way, that we're, the way that we're brought up as accountants, the professional exams teaches us to be world-class technicians. We're brilliant at doing a set of accounts. We're brilliant at doing tax returns. We're, we're usually brilliant at doing tax planning. But when it comes to running a business, most accountants, and it's through no fault of their own, are actually pretty poor at it. And it's because we're not taught and I, and I think back to, I think back to when I started my practice back in 1996, and all the mistakes I made. When I started in 96, I thought I had all the answers. I thought I knew it all. Uh, I thought I knew how to build and grow a successful accountancy practice. And whilst I certainly got some things right, I got many, many more things completely wrong because I didn't understand marketing. I didn't understand selling. I didn't understand pricing. I didn't understand leadership skills, how to manage people. And I look back at all the mistakes I made and the, and the lost opportunities, the, the money I missed out on because I was doing so many things wrong. Uh, and, and that saddens me that so many accountants find themselves in a pretty poor situation financially con considering the fact that we are a great profession, we can change people's lives and yet we, we're not adequately, adequately rewarded 
because we're not taught these important skills of how to build a great accounting firm. Mm. Well, I think I think that's, that's very true, and I think that's it is interesting that you, you mentioned that Mark, because the principal audience for this interview today is the next generation of accounting firm leaders, and I think that's a a word to the wise there that that, that these things need to be understood early on in the process so as to avoid pain later on. Mm. And we, we sit here having this discussion uh, at the dawn of a brand new year and you have a very unique perspective because you're able to see what's going on in a very wide uh, and, and quite proactive uh, cross-section of accounting firms. So may I ask, in your opinion, what would you say are the greatest opportunities for growth uh, for accounting firms in 2014? Uh, interesting question. Uh, I think that we live in interesting times, and I think that it, when it comes to growing accounting firms, I, th I think that the, the the development over the years of the, the the internet, and in particular in the last few years, the, the, the power of social media, it, it's completely changed the game in terms of growing accounting firms. And what I mean by that is that it, it actually gives it, it gives the smaller firms the opportunity to have a level playing field because it's not uh, effective growth effective marketing it, it's not about who can spend the, the most money on really nice brochures and websites and so on um, the, the smaller firms can compete with the big firms uh, using uh, tools and resources that are available that don't cost anything um, for example uh, this might sound controversial but I, I don't necessarily agree that a business needs to have a website anymore I, I've seen businesses business owners and accountants spend tens of thousands of pounds sometimes on a website and yet if you with a little bit of uh, with a little bit of focus and effort building a great LinkedIn profile that demonstrates that you're an expert and, and using that to, to network and help with people having a great YouTube channel with two or three great videos that people can see what you're like as a firm of accountants and get some great advice uh, uh, having uh, a, a Twitter profile uh, and, and having a great uh, lead page for example for c capturing contact details when you put all these things together you can build a very effective online marketing strategy without spending a lot of money uh, and also, I think one of the keys with marketing, within, certainly with the accounting profession, it, it's about how you position yourself as what I call the credible expert. Uh, in other words, if you're, when you're talking to prospects, why would a prospect want to talk to your accounting firm rather than a firm down the road? And it's about differentiating yourself. It's about demonstrating you are better at whatever it is you want to be the best at, whether it's tax planning, business growth, advice, whatever. And... There's so many things we can do as accountants that don't cost a huge amount of money to demonstrate that we're an expert. For example, having a handful of really powerful videos on a, on a YouTube channel doesn't cost anything to do, just a bit of focus, attention to detail, and, and learning the skills for doing that. So I think that we're, we are in exciting times because there are so many opportunities to effectively grow our accounting practice using modern technology and without having to spend a huge amount of money. It's a, that's a fascinating point you've made. I think that's the first time I've heard uh, a view on a, on a practice website in that way. And I think as, as you were explaining it and I was thinking it through, one thing that came to my mind is it is not the following of the pack and saying we've got to have a website because everyone's got a website or we have to have a particularly sharp website because our competitors have got a sharp website. It's the intelligent employment of online tools and resources that are available to us to build a strategy that works for our firm specifically. Like you say, whether it be a lead page or what, uh, that captures information, whether that be an offer, whether that be um, a LinkedIn presence or a, a social media profile or whatever that is, um, it's how you use the resource, not just we have a web, we've got to have a website because everyone else has got one. I, I hadn't thought of it like that before. That's interesting to me. And therefore, what that makes me think of now is perhaps my next question for you is, is you've now gone through quite the process that, that many of our audience will not reach for a number of years. you qualified, which our audience uh, has done. You have um, formed your own practice, which some have, but not as many. you built that, pro that um, practice. you sold that practice. You've developed uh, a very rich suite of uh, solutions for AVN members. So. Did you expect, in all honesty, Mark, did you expect to see the level of success that you have? And what do you know now, having done all these things, 
that you wish you'd known back in 1991? That's an interesting. Well, the first part of that question is a hard one. Did I expect the success? I guess to some extent the answer is yes because I because I've always been uh, confident in my abilities and I think that uh, having a belief is really really important believing you can mm. achieve something and I think the way I was brought up by my my parents as a child was that was the, the the mindset of you can achieve whatever you want in this life as long as you kind of have a focus have some goals and and certainly meeting Steve Pike back in 1998, that, that kind of reinforced that because Steve talked a lot about then about the mindset and having goals and, and, and focus. And so that's that's always uh, uh, helped me through through life. Uh, um, what was the second part of the question? Um, what do you wish you'd known? What, yeah, what do you know now that you wish you'd known yeah. back in 91? Um, well, uh, everything. Uh, and, I, and I think that... <laughs> Because I, I look, as I said earlier, I look back on, I look back on my, particularly the first two years of my accounting practice, and I look back, and I'm horrified at the mistakes I made, uh, particularly in the area of pricing, which is why I'm so passionate about pricing, because I left tens and tens of thousands of pounds on the table because mm. I didn't know how to price. Yeah. Uh, and so that was one of the biggest mistakes I made. That, that I, I'm not kidding. Over the over the first two years of my practice, it cost me over a hundred thousand pounds in lost profits through mm. not pricing properly. Uh, I also uh, made some horrendous decisions uh, in terms of recruiting people. My people management skills were shocking. Uh, uh, but I think the I think the problem is uh, certainly my problem back then, and I think a lot of people can perhaps relate to this. Is there's a danger that we think we know it all, and I certainly thought mm. I knew it all. I was in my mid thirties. Uh, setting up this accounting practice, I'd, I'd, I'd watched some of the gurus, I'd been on some of the conferences and thought I suddenly knew it all. And the reality is, there is so much that we need to learn that we've got to, tr we've got to think about it as being ongoing learning. Uh, uh, and so, for example, I, I typically spend most Friday afternoons is, is learning time. I, I, I find that my, certs, my, my type of person, I'm a, I'm a visual person, and so I don't, I don't learn very well from reading books, but I learn from videos. So I buy lots of online training in, in marketing, pricing, selling skills, uh, how, to use the, how to use YouTube, YouTube, how to use LinkedIn, and I absorb all this stuff every, every Friday. I do a bit more learning because we have to... We have to have that attitude. We have to have the attitude of knowing that we don't know enough. There's always more stuff we need to learn. Uh, and so if we can adopt this constant improvement, constant just learning something new, learning new skills, uh, it'll, it will have start to transform our results. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. And crystal ball time now, really, because... because the, what you've made me think of there is the, uh, the the DNA of success, if you will. You, you mentioned their belief in own ability. You mentioned their understanding, being self-aware enough to know what type of learning suits you best, what time you set aside, what works for you, is to specifically set aside time to learn. All of these factors are sort of part of the DNA of, of, of a successful um, a successful professional and personal life for you. So. Many young professionals complain of not really understanding what it takes to make it to partner. And you mentioned that you made a number of horrendous decisions, people management decisions back then, despite um, I think we all fall into this category, thinking that we know it all. So, speaking now to the next generation, Mark, if you were still in practice today and you had a senior manager level of professionals, trying to catch your eye as the, as the future of your firm, as partner potential. What would be your counsel to them in terms of what they needed to do or to show you to make it a partner? My advice to young professionals wanting to make it a partner, that's an interesting question. Uh, and actually I've got a fairly glib answer and, uh, uh, and that would be don't go into partnership. Which is mm. when I was when I was uh, working as a chartered account in a firm of accountants. That's what I wanted. I wanted to be in partnership. That was my my goal, um, and realise that. I mean, fortunately in my case, I was working for a, a large firm, but wasn't looking to take on new partners, which at the time seemed like a bad thing. But it forced me mm -hmm. that, to to realise I had to go it alone and set up my own practice. That wasn't my 
my first choice preference. I would have prefer, preferred the easier route of going into partnership. However, in, in hindsight, I think that going into partnership is is full of uh, full of pitfalls, problems, and I think it, I think there's a uh, there's a there's a, a major change going on in the in the accounting profession from a number of aspects. One of which is um, we're an aging profession. Uh, the, the baby boomers come along. Most partners are in their fifties and sixties, looking to retire, uh, and 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 yet there's not enough young people coming through uh, to buy out their practices. And so there's a huge succession issue. There's a uh, there's a huge problem uh, facing the older partners in terms of their retirement strategy and it's something that a friend of mine Mark Lloyd Bottom is very passionate about and talks about so I think there's the problem at that end of the spectrum that there isn't there aren't enough young people looking to buy into partnership but also when you look at it from the perspective of the young partners why would you remortgage and take out huge loans huge debts to buy into a partnership and be saddled with debt for years and also I say a big problem with doing that is the fact that because the, because things are changing, and I mentioned with with technology and social media, uh, and uh, and the fact that we've got this aging profession, a lot of a lot of traditional partnerships are very old fashioned in the way they think. And one of the things we see at AVN is very often a young new partner will come along to one of our productivity productivity events, get very excited about doing things very very different, going back to their older partners, and the partner saying. We don't want to change. We're retiring in the next two or three years. Why do we need to change? And so the mm-hmm. younger partners get very, very frustrated because they can't do the things that they want to do. So I think going into partnership is A, expensive, uh, and B, is going to leave people frustrated. Whereas uh, setting up in practice as a sole practitioner, I mentioned earlier the fact that I see that thanks to things like social media, we can now, the smaller firm can compete on a level playing field. And... I did. We did a Steve and I, Steve Pipe and I did a survey a, 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 a year or so ago, looking at some of the most successful firms within AVN. And what's interesting is we find that the most profitable accountants within AVN, the ones right at the top, the top five percent, are in the main, not always, but in the main, sole practitioners. And I'm firmly of the belief that that it's it, it, the, if you've got the right mindset uh, and the right uh, the, the, the right uh, access to the right tools and the learning and, and, and the uh, and wanting to learn then as a sole practitioner you can achieve incredible things that you can't do when you saddle with other partners uh, so so my glib answer was don't go into partnership uh, look mm. at look at starting your own accounting firm which is much much cheaper you don't need to spend a huge amount of money particularly on things like marketing um, the big problem of course you've got is as I again I touched on earlier is You've then got to acquire the skills, but I yes. would suggest that it's worth spending two or three years acquiring those skills than spending tens or hundreds of thousands of pounds buying into a partnership. Yeah, I think that's where I was going to go with it. Actually, the reverse of that coin, of course, is that you're now a business owner. From being a from being a, a manager, you're now a business owner. Uh, there's no one to make you brew anymore. There's no resource like you used to have. There's no systems like you used to have. It, it's a kind of a reinvention of the wheel or an innovation on the wheel, as it were, when you start your own practice. So there is um, tremendous risk involved, even though it's cheaper, and there's a great degree of personal um, resolve required to be successful in that environment, I would have thought. Yeah. And if anybody is, is watching this who, who is either thinking of setting up in practice or have newly started, uh, I, I would suggest that they, should, that they check out some of the interviews I've done uh, on my YouTube channel, where I've interviewed people like uh, Phil Ellaby, who's a sole practitioner uh, up in the north of England. Uh, Stephen Brigginshaw is based down in Reading. He's only, he had only been in practice, I think, 15 months at the time of the interview a few months back. Uh, someone called Shaz from AA Accountants. And these are all sole practitioners who are doing things very, very different and getting mm. extraordinary results. Uh, so I would recommend to anybody watch those videos, learn from those other accountants. Learn one of the best things, you, best people you can learn from is not gurus like like me, but learning from other people who are in the same position. People who have started sure. up an accounting firm and are doing great things, doing different things, and getting great results. Absolutely, I mean, peer level learning is 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 a vital part of the whole process. I agree. Having said that, I think you've brought a number of ideas to this interview today. 
that have um, given a lot of food for thought. And as we come to the conclusion of that now, thank you very much for that. And as sort of one more thing I'd like to sort of finish on. One of the know-it-all mistakes that we've talked about that I make is that because I'm familiar with the AVN and because I have worked with many AVN members over the years, I assume that everyone knows about the AVN and exactly what it can do for practices of varying sizes. I'm wrong and <laughs> that's not always the case. So for those watching this part, if they want to take some first steps towards understanding more about the value that AVM brings to practices and where it provides support, what should they do? Okay, great question. Uh, a couple of things. Firstly, they can uh, get in touch with me very easily. So uh, I encourage all accountants to connect up with me on LinkedIn. And uh, when when an accountant connects with link, on LinkedIn with me, I send out a message via LinkedIn with links to all sorts of free resources I've created for accountants. So that's a, a really easy step is just connect up on LinkedIn and also connect with Steve Pipe on LinkedIn. Uh, the second step then is if you want to find out more about AVN is Steve and I run about eight times a year proactivity event, AVN proactivity. And it's a, it's a, it's a one day event that Steve and I run where we go through and we'll, we'll share dozens and dozens of ideas of how uh, to build a successful accounting firm. And, and over the years, we've been running proactivity for many, many years now. We've had thousands of accounting firms go through the process uh, over the years. So that would be a, a great next step. Uh, and, and if you if an accountant connects with me on LinkedIn, I'll happily send through a link so they can find out exactly what proactivity is all about uh, and how to book a place on it. That, that's great. I've witnessed proactivity firsthand, Mark, so I can I can certainly um, uh, testify to the uh, the effectiveness of it and how it how it facilitates a tremendous amount of thought uh, about the future of, uh, of of the practice. What I'll be what we'll be doing as we publish this is uh, I'll create all of these links if you'd be kind of to provide me with them and we'll put this uh, with the video so uh, anyone watching can link into you via LinkedIn and Steve or directly to the proactivity um, sessions straight away on that basis. So that would be great. On that, on that note there, it just remains for me to say thank you very much for the time you've taken um, to, to speak with us today and to uh, reach an audience that um, not uh, everyone takes time to reach. Very much appreciate that. Fascinated by some of the ideas uh, that have been presented today and we're going to explore those in, in more detail and uh, wish you all the very best for the new year, Mark. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Mark, and thank you for inviting me. Goodbye. Cheers. Okay, how was that? Was that okay?